Okay, so for all you nomads out there, especially those who like to boondock, did you ever come up one of the roads and you say, gee, I wonder if I should really drive down this road like this one? Okay, so actually I've run into like three of these roads today trying to find somewhere to camp. I wanted to go out boondocking and I employed the same strategy on all of them. I said, I'll start down. If it gets iffy, I'll turn around and, and we'll go back out. First two, that worked fine on. Third one, I didn't realize I was going to be driving down a one lane road with a borrowed ditch on both sides and absolutely nowhere to turn around. <laughs> and so here I am <laughs> and here I'm going to sit for a little bit. No, I'm not really stuck in terms of being stuck in the mud, um, but I did make it as far as I can go and I can't go back where I came from. Um, I actually went through some places that I was sure I was going to get stuck because there was nowhere to turn around. And so when I got here, I started, it was got dried up again. I said, okay, I'm up higher, must be safe. And I came around this corner right behind us and realized it was going downhill and getting really, really messy. Uh, mud and it's like clay sticks to the tires sticks to your shoes and so I got there and I got a place I could kind of pull to the side and the vehicle could still get past me if necessary and, and uh, I stopped and it goes downhill some more and then up again and it's muddy at the bottom and muddy on the way back up and I really don't think I'd be able to get the van back up again and if I got stuck down there I'd be blocking the whole road. Hey, so this is where I'm parked and you can see the road coming down here it is messy <laughs> to say the least and it goes up the other side into the distance so I'm gonna have to wait until this dries out to be able to make it through there and there's no way I'm I'm going back through where I came through already but Deborah and I actually camped out in this area not too far up the road here uh, a couple years ago we had the minivan and her van at the time and so I knew the area and I thought I'd be reasonably safe um, I didn't realize how bad the road was going to get and that I wouldn't be able to turn around. So the good news is, and this is really important, uh, anytime you're getting off grid and going way out in the back country, I got three quarters of a tank of gas, I have plenty of food, plenty of water, uh, I have a cell signal here which I knew I would when I came in. So they're really, um, I'm well supplied, I'm safe and secure and I could be here for, um, you know, I could be here for a week if I had to be without any real problem, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. It's dried up a lot today already. Uh, the sun's just setting now, but it's supposed to be in the 60s and sunny in the next couple days. So I'm sure probably by tomorrow uh, I'll be able to get out. Talk to a guy who works on one of the uh, some of the t uh, radio towers nearby. He's the only person I've seen. And uh, <laughs> he said, you know, probably by tomorrow it'll be plenty dry. Cause it, and he said also the only people get stuck out here all the time because uh, it gets so messy. Um, and, it, and there'll be parts of the road are fine, then there's parts that aren't. And right now I'm at a part that's not. Um, so I'm just going to wait it out so I don't get stuck. In the meantime, I literally have like a million dollar view out my van doors and out the window. So, you know, it's hard to complain about being stuck in a place like this. So the plan is anyways, <laughs> seeing as though there's room people can get around me if anybody does come by, nobody's been out here, um, and nobody probably will be, honestly. It's a pretty remote area uh, outside of Cody, Wyoming, but there's a little area here that's pretty firm and behind me, and so if the ground dries up a little more on the road, I'm going to back in here tomorrow morning. Uh, otherwise, there's one just a little further down that I can pull off at as well, but it's a little further down the hill. And whichever one, I'll pull into it and park there and wait until uh, it dries up. I'll probably leave the day after tomorrow, head back over to Gillette to take care of some errands i got to do. Um, but in any case, it'll probably be dry enough to go tomorrow, but I don't want to take a chance of what I'm going to run into further down, so I'm just going to try and get off the road a little more tomorrow, and uh, then I'll give it another day to dry out. And next time I come across a road, a dirt primitive road, and I'm saying, I wonder if I should drive down this road, I think I'm going to pass and not drive down the road. <laughs> This is me itching from too much time in the city and too much time not being able to get out and do any boondocking and just wanting to get off grid and get out in some peace and quiet. The good news is I've done that. <laughs> not parked exactly where I'd like to be parked. I'm kind of off level, but, you know, I'm safe and secure. And the only sound out here is the wind and bird song. So that's pretty glorious. And I got an incredible view. So it's all good. Uh, <laughs> But if you're going off grid, uh, you know, make sure you think you're going to be able to get through and 
uh, especially if it's a road you don't know and uh, make sure you got water and food and fuel and things so that if you do have to wait out something like I'm doing right now you can be reasonably comfortable and not in any kind of bad situation so <laughs> thanks for joining me this one uh, I canceled the live chat tonight this is Tuesday I'm recording this because it was a little bit uh, the signal wasn't quite up I don't think to do in a live stream from here and honestly I didn't know if I might have to move the van in the middle of it or something so I th if somebody had to come by so um, I'm uh, just waiting out the, the mud now, and uh, we'll be back with regular programming soon.